For today, we're going to be looking at the inverse of conditional statements. I'm going to use the same examples I use for converse. So, but now we're going to be looking at the inverse of conditional statements. So on a conditional statement, first of all, let me identify the if and the then. If elephants fly, then fish do not swim. And the reason why I wanted to identify the if and the then, because the if part is the hypothesis, the then part is the conclusion. Now for the inverse, what I'm going to do is I'm going to negate each of them. So instead of saying yes, I'm going to say no. And if one of them says no, I'm going to say yes. I'm just going to say the opposite for each of them. So for the hypothesis says elephants fly. So what I'm going to write, I'm going to start with if. Now here it says elephants fly. So I'm just going to say elephants do not fly. Comma. Then I see that con the conclusion says fish do not swim. I like it when I see the word not in it because it's easy to negate a not by just saying yes or just not writing it. So I'm just going to say then fish do swim, right? Just saying fish do yes swim doesn't sound right. So make sure it makes sense what you're writing, right? Like I said, a not is easy to negate by writing a yes on it or by not writing it at all. Now just do whatever makes sense. So that's what we call the inverse. I negate the hypotheses and I negate the conclusion. Now let's take a look at number six. Let me start by identifying my if and my then parts. I see the if and I see the then. And the reason why I do that is because the if is the hypothesis part and the then identifies the conclusion. Now for the inverse, I'm going to negate each of them. So let me start with my word if. To begin with, the hypothesis says you tell the truth. So I'm just going to say you do not tell the truth. Then the conclusion to begin with says you do not, I like the word not, you do not have to remember anything. The way I'm going to negate this not is just by not writing it. So I'm just going to say you do have to remember anything. All right, let's take a look at question number seven. Let me identify my if and my then, because the if part and my then part, that's how it's gonna help me identify the hypotheses. The hypothesis is my if part. My conclusion is my then part. Now for the inverse, I'm negating each of them. So let me start with if, because I'm gonna write my hypothesis. So if, now here it says it does not I like the word not. Include the freedom to make mistakes. Because the way I'm going to negate that, I'm just going to say if it does include the freedom to make mistakes, then the conclusion right now says the freedom is not worth having. So I'm just going to say freedom is worth having. It's easy to negate when there's a not. Now let's take a look at question number eight. Let me identify the words if and then. Because the if part, that's the hypothesis. The then part is the conclusion. Now for the inverse, I'm going to negate each of them. So let me start with if. Right now the hypothesis says it is raining. Remember I have to say the opposite. So I'm going to say 
it is not raining. Keep it with the same wording. Don't come and say it is sunny, it is this, it is that. Don't change the wording. Just because it's not raining doesn't mean it's sunny. So I'm just saying if it is not raining, so I, I negate it by including the not in it. If it is not raining, then the conclusion to begin with says Sam and Sarah will not go to the football game. It's easy to negate a not. So I'm going to say then Sam and Sarah will go to the football game. Keep it with the same wording. Kind of like you guys say, don't be extra. Don't be adding extra words. Don't come and say, we'll go and watch the football game. Because I've seen some previous homeworks. You guys like to include other words. Don't include other words. Just keep it with the same wording. Now, inverse, all we're doing is we're negating the hypothesis and we're negating that conclusion. We're negating each of them.